Hey everyone, in this tutorial I wanted to talk about using clips to interact with your sensory percussion setup. We've touched on this in a couple of my tutorials, but there's a lot to cover and there's some pretty major concepts at play that I think deserve more attention. So if you're on my Patreon or have grabbed this file from my website uh, really quickly, this is just an audio track with my uh, sensor audio uh, routing into sensory percussion. This is the sensory percussion plugin track and this routes MIDI from sensory percussion into the IAC bus and we're using that just to control a few things not too much really just these two things uh, that we'll hit later on in this video we'll talk about what these are for later as well. Uh, I just really wanted to focus on what you can do with clips to control things and not get too deep in using sensory percussion controllers. The beauty of using clips for controlling things is that it frees you up to be expressive for things that expressivity makes sense for. A quick explanation of how this is set up. Um, I have all of the examples and different scenes here um, and all you have to do is just launch the scene and it's going to select the appropriate kit, play any clips that are related to the example, and it will also turn the unused tracks off. So if you notice, all the tracks are record armed, but I have all of these clips, these red clips that say off, automating uh, like the track activator to be off for that example. You can kind of see a convention of each example being, um, what's that? cascaded down and to the right. So the first thing that clips are useful for, which is kind of, we've kind of already just talked about, is for turning sounds on and off, bringing in new sounds and stuff. Uh, even this SP kit switching track is just using different clips to select different kits. So we've talked about this before, but you can see if I select kit one, a scene with kit one, it selects kit one at the bottom, and if I select kit two, there we go. And then we only use three kits in this tutorial, um, mostly kit three, but you can see that it's gonna select the appropriate kit automatically for me every time. In addition to using clips to automate turning things on and off for us, we can also use them for continuous parameters. And we can use those to control parameters within sensory percussion or parameters within a the rest of Ableton. In this first example, if we start this scene, we can see I, I have a clip that has no notes in it, but it just has this one CC that has just a ramp on CC1. And sensory percussion, if we go over, we can see that at the end of the phrase, I have that CC mapped to the send parameter, and that's just going to throw the sound of reverb. So got a four bar phrase, kick on the center, rim, so like a snare sound, and then at the end of the phrase it throws the sound into reverb, just as a nice little phrase um, effect kind of thing. The way I set that up was using external automation, and then I had it, I learned this MIDI input to that CC, and then I mapped it to the, the send level. So that's using a clip to control something within sensory percussion. We can also use clips to control things within Ableton. Uh, one of my favorite things to control is the chain selector. If you're not familiar, the chain selector is this little slider up here that allows you to uh, select different chains. These would be chains. These little markers allow you to give a range to each chain. The simplest thing you can do is just give each chain one assignment on the chain selector. On the first chain I have a kick sound. Second chain, I'm just moving this with my mouse right now, it's like a hi-hat sound which I named ghost for some reason, and then a snare sound. This clip has automation of the chain selector which we can see down here. And if I, I set this up so that if I was to play 16th notes, it's basically
basically outlining a drum groove for us. And then again, doing that again while watching the chain selector. Another use for the chain selector is to make continuous changes. In this example, we can see that I have two different chains, and these are just different samples. Um, but the, the chain assignment, or the zone, is longer, and I have them crossfaded between each other. And this automation, oh, here's, this is a great time to show a nice tip. Uh, if you want to see, if you want to pull, click on the clip and see a specific envelope, instead of going in here and drilling down to the parameter that you want to see, something you can do is just click on the parameter that you want to see, and then if you hit Shift Tab, it'll pull that up automatically. So here you can see this automation that's just a giant scrub of the chain selector over a couple beats. And then if we go back, you can see the chain selector moving in that uh, triangle pattern. And so what this is doing is auto automating crossfading between two different samples for us. Another cool thing that's happening here is that the, the kick and snare sounds are actually coming from the sensory percussion plugin. You can see these, like the kick and snare sounds I have loaded here. But the samples that we're crossfading between are hosted in an Ableton rack. Let's use clips to enable and disable tracks mid-performance. And the way we're going to do that is I'm using this track to take MIDI from sensory percussion and pass it into this bass track. And we're using this clip to automate the, cha uh, the track activation so that for one measure it's on and then the second measure it's off. So for this first measure we can hear the synth bass but then the second measure no synth bass. Another fun possibility we can explore with this kind of setup is rather than sequencing exactly what we want to happen, we can use follow actions to put this up to chance. What follow actions do is give you options for things to happen after. Instead of a default like looping behavior, you have these choices for advancing to the clip above or below or the first or the last or stop or play again, that kind of thing. You have two different actions and you can give uh, like a probability to each one. So in this case, it's basically a 50% chance that it'll play the clip again, but a 50% chance it'll move on to the next clip. And then conversely with the clip below it, it's a 50% chance it'll play it again, 50% it'll move back up. And then this clip has the track activator off, this clip has the track activator on. So what this creates is some probability, giving the bass some more variation. And of course we can adjust this ratio to change the results. So if I want it to be on more often, I might bump this up to three and leave that one where it is. With this specific example, we have this bass instrument that's been playing one note the whole time, just playing the MIDI note that we're sending from sensory percussion. We can use a MIDI pitch effect and an envelope to control the pitch over time, allowing us to play more of a melody, or a bass line in this case. We could also use these follow actions on the pitch transposition. 
In this case, I have this set of four clips that are that have follow actions to either replay or advance to the next one, and then these middle two will either go back to the one before or the one after, and then this bottom one will either replay or go back up. Creating with a root, the minor third, the fifth, and an octave, fairly chancy arpeggiation. So far we've been using clips to automate things in various ways, but leaving the actual notes up to us to play. This is my default approach, however there's a lot of sort of hybrid approaches we can take. In this case, we're going to use a trap hat. This clip has one note in it, but the track has an arpeggiator. We're going to use a velocity controller from sensory percussion to control the rate, so that if I play soft, the rate goes down and then as we play harder, the rate goes up. So in this case, we're not actually playing the trap hat. However, the way it sounds, the result, is completely dependent on our playing. And I find this a very artistically satisfying approach. Okay, so for this last example, we're doing several new things. First of all, instead of automating the pitch effect like we did back here with this pitch envelope, I'm using a Max for Live device that I made called MIDI Sample and Hold, which is basically going to take this clip, which is a slightly more involved uh, sequence of notes, and then pass it on to two instruments. This bass track is going to essentially pick the bottom note of the chord and allow us to play that as a bass note and then this track is going to cycle through any of the notes in the chord with every note from sensory percussion. If you got this file from my Patreon or my website, you should already have these devices, but you can also download these from my website, and I even made a nice little manual for them. We're using the track activator gating trick to only play bass notes on beat one. On the bass track, we're also automating the octave selection So that clip is only three eighth notes, which will permutate nicely, giving us some variation over time. So bass on beat one, kick and snare from sensory percussion, trap hats that we're interacting with, and then this cycle of notes coming from this MIDI clip. Let's see what this sounds like. So what just happened there is I'm using this final track to automate the switching of scenes. I just have this one MIDI note and it's eight bars in, and that MIDI note is mapped to select the next scene. And conversely, I have a four bar clip in this scene that will select the scene before it. This allows us to create a bit of a song structure. This is how I'd like to navigate a song with multiple parts because I don't wanna have to think about changing scenes. Like if you're playing in a band, and you're going from the verse to the chorus, do you do anything to switch to the chorus? No, you just play the notes of the chorus. So I like to delegate this to the computer. By going to this B section, we are turning the trap hat off, and we have a new MIDI clip, a little simpler this time. And then we're still triggering the bass on just beat one, but we don't have the octave switching happening anymore. I also added this clip, and we're, the only thing we're gonna interact with for this is actually the, uh, the filter on it. You can hear it if I bring it up just with my mouse. It's kind of a, a nice little dreamy thing, but I'm actually using a, the new fangled envelope controller from Sensory Percussion. You can see it here on the rim to give us a nice little rise and fall. And then you can see when I hit the rim, that envelope is being applied to the filter nicely. 